All right, so we're picking up with this next idea. It's um, something called root mean square speed, and it's going to take us a little while to get through, so I figured we just start with a new video um, so that I don't run out halfway through. All right, so a um, little bit of review. Um, molecules average kinetic energy is proportional to their absolute temperature, so the temperature in Kelvin. Okay, so in a sample of gas, um, there is an average kinetic energy, an average speed, that we use the Kelvin temperature to measure. Hopefully this is all old school. But remember that that is an average kinetic energy. There are all sorts of speeds of the molecules. Some are moving faster than average. Some are moving slower than average. Um, so we've got a lot of different speeds of the molecules. Okay, plus these moving molecules are colliding with the walls. They're colliding with each other. So after these collisions, although we're conserving the momentum because the temperature is not changing, the momentum might not be distributed evenly between the two molecules after the collision or the wall and the molecule after the collision. So the result is you have molecules in that sample that have a huge range of speeds. So this is where the, the starting point comes from. So kinetic energy is, or the average kinetic energy is how we measure temperature, but there's a whole lot more going on with the molecules than just that one temperature, that one average speed. So here is a blurry graph. Here is a distribution curve um, for molecular speeds at two different temperatures. So notice that um, the blue line is at zero degrees. You have a much larger percentage of molecules at a low temperature as opposed to the 100 degrees, where now you have a, a wider range of molecules, but many more of them are at a higher speed. Um, so what does that mean? Um, the higher temperature molecules have a larger fraction moving, and so the average kinetic energy is increasing as the temperature is going up. So. Let's take a look at this a little more detailed. So here would be just one graph um, at a particular temperature showing the molecular speed. There's three different points labeled. You got UMP, UAV, and URMS. So the U represents the speed, obviously, but the different kinds, or the way we look at it a little bit differently. So the MP simply stands for the most probable. That's the top of the peak. Makes sense. We don't really worry too much about this one. Um, the AV represents the average speed of the molecules. Okay, that's... And then the third idea is what we refer to as the root mean square speed, RMS. This is important because this speed represents the speed of the molecule whose kinetic energy is equal to the average kinetic energy of all the molecules. So not the average temperature, but the average kinetic energy. They're not exactly the same. So the root mean square speed plays an important role, once again, because it represents the speed of um, a molecule with the average kinetic energy. Notice that the root mean square speed is slightly different than the average speed of the molecules. Um, so one more time, here's that first graph that we were looking at. So let's analyze it a little bit more. So the kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared, or in this case, the root mean, squa root mean square speed squared. Um, Ke is kinetic energy. m is the mass of the molecule. The um, u is the root mean squared speed, this speed that we're looking at. 
Okay, the RMS speed is important because as the temperature increases, the root mean square speed is going to increase even though the mass remains constant. So the root mean square speed is going up. More molecules are going to be moving at a slightly faster rate as we increase the temperature, but the mass isn't changing. So that allows us to increase the kinetic energy as the temperature is going up. Okay, root mean square speed is not the same thing as average kinetic energy. It's a little bit different. So here's how you'd calculate them both. So let's say that we have four objects. They're moving at 4, 6, 10, and 12 miles per hour, respectively. Okay, to do the average, what am I going to do? I'm going to add them all up, divide by 4, and I get an um, average speed of 8 meters per second. The root mean square speed, however, is a little bit different root mean square speed, I'm going to square each of the speeds, get an average, and then I'm going to take the square root of that. And so that winds up being slightly higher than the average speed. And remember, this root mean square speed is the speed of a molecule that possesses the average kinetic energy. Okay, let's continue to look at this idea. So according to the kinetic molecular theory, the average kinetic energy um, of any collection of gases is equal to 1 half mv squared or mu squared and has a specific value at a given temperature. So if you compare different types of gases, those with smaller molar masses will have the same average kinetic energy as those with larger atoms larger molar masses. So the average kinetic energy is going to be the same regardless of what the mass of the gas is. Okay, so I have hydrogen at a certain temperature and I have methane at a certain temperature. The average kinetic energy is going to be the same, but the root mean square speed is not. Lighter gases are going to have a higher root mean square speed because they have a smaller mass, okay? The smaller the mass, the faster the root mean square speed in order to get the kinetic energy to be the same. So smaller gases, lighter gases, are going to be moving faster at the same temperature. That's kind of the weird thing. Um, then heavier gases are going to be. So once again, we're going to continue this idea. The average kinetic energy of two different gases is the same at each temperature. But since the mass of the particles are different, that means that the slower particles actually are moving faster. Here's an equation that shows that relationship. So the root mean square speed is equal to the square root of 3RT divided by the molar mass. Let's not worry about derivation. AP is not going to worry about it. So, but m is molar mass. Okay, so a couple of notes. In this case, r is not 0 0.082 liter atmospheres, atmospheres per k mole. r is joules per k mole. And molar mass has to be in kilograms per mole. Notice I have that in red. Don't forget that one. That's going to mess you up in calculations. Don't let it. Um, kilograms per mole for molar mass because joules is, remember, kilogram meter squared per second squared. So I need kilograms here for the joules to cancel out. And then that gives us meters per second for the root mean square speed because you have kilograms canceling out you have moles canceling out, you have Kelvin canceling out because we've got the temperature in there. What am I left with? Remember that joule is kilogram meter squared per second squared. So meters per second squared, I take the square root of that and get just meters per second. So that works out nicely. Okay, so um, Let's take a look at some calculations we're using this equation. So if I have two um, gases at the same temperature, so same average kinetic energy, same average kinetic energy, but what are their root mean square speeds going to be? So nitrogen has a molar mass of 28, 
helium has a molar mass of 4. Molar mass, much, much different, which means the root mean square speed, even though the temperature is the same, root mean squared speed is going to be very different. Calculations, 515 for uh, nitrogen, but 1360 for the helium gas. So smaller molecules are going to be moving at a faster speed overall. Um, here's just another graph that lets you see that idea. As the molar mass gets bigger, we go from hydrogen to helium and so forth. The root mean square speed is actually getting smaller. So you have a, a um, distribution curve that is much narrower for heavier molecules than you do for the lighter molecules. You can get lighter molecules to move at a much more varied speed and faster because they're littler. Okay, another idea um, is the most probable speed. You can also calculate that. So notice that it looks really similar to the root mean square speed. Do you remember what the only difference is? Instead of a 3, we've got a 2 here. So everything else is the same. Um, we're going to quit here because we're moving into effusion and diffusion, and I'm going to run out of slides. So we're going to quit it here. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Your book does a nice job talking about root mean square speed as well. Um, so come to class with questions if you need to.